but like we have like all these little like white splotches and stuff like that okay those textures are pulled from plastic that's been like like from paint and then been pulled up and stuff like that okay um, oh nice so that's yeah, what he I means mean, by textures i don't know why i yeah. was thinking okay yeah like all this like this bigger stuff here it's like whenever you put a piece of plastic on the paint and just kind of pull it up and okay. i mean these were actually put in digitally but that's how those textures are made and stuff and I mean, it just kind of gives like a level of depth to your work. I mean, it's just something new too. And it kind of, what these textures do, it gives you the sense of like feeling it. Like, you know, you're looking what you're looking and being able to like sense what you could feel, mm. you know, okay. I guess if that makes sense. Right, right, right. Okay. Mm. Um, what was it? Kind of like if I put like a chain link fence in the background, you know, you like, you see that chain link fence, but, and you know, that's what it is. Right. But that's so that so that would be considered texture though. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Textures yeah. can be anything, honestly. I mean what was it? I mean, you could make something like that looks like it's fuzzy. You know, you could take a picture of a rug and put it in the background and that would be seen as a texture. Like, you know, you change the opacity, you drop it down. Um Okay. It's it's just a, another way of adding depth and stuff like that to your right. stuff. Um and it's kind of like, you know, if you're using the tree stuff, if you were to sit there and let's say you took, um, since y'all are doing sustainable toys, if you took, um, you know, like the rings from the, like wood logs. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, or like bark, tree bark. Those yeah. are all the textures you're using. Um, so, I mean, it's one of those things you'll do, like, if you can, if you see it and you feel like you can feel it, that's, you know, that that's pretty much a texture. That's the best way for me to explain it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you think about like how you guys were saying like a rainforest for my background right, texture, right. if you think about it, um, you know, if it's close up, it's going to read differently than, you know, a whole rainforest with a bunch of trees. So that's how you could think about it too. Like, is your texture going to be like a close up, you know, up to something where you can't really decipher exactly what it is, or is it going to be like further back and be like kind of scenic looking texture? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So Kiana, the uh, the brown texture that you originally chosen for your 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 project, what what was that supposed to be? Is that like the desert? I can't um, tell. no. Um, are you talking about the like the brown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the background that I turned the opacity down, it was just a photograph of like wood. Okay. Um, uh, because that was one of my textures was wood, but um, I put some toys like wooden toys in the background too, mm -hmm. an image of some wooden toys, and yeah, I turned that opacity down so it wasn't so bright. Um, but I was hoping it would still read as like wood and give that like wooden toy vibe. It does. So I was actually, I was just looking at it before you said that. And if you look in between where the little uh, green tree is, and I guess there's like a little wooden toy on the bottom right side, you can see the wood grain that's like in there, like a little square of wood grain. Mm. that's right in there. So it, it does, it does give a very toy vibe because I mean, that's how they look, you know, they've got the, the log line, the, I guess those are the age lines of the tree, pretty much the yeah. compression line, they compress the wood. So, I mean, yeah, it's got a very earthy oh, feel yeah. if you're able to okay. see those grains yeah, and stuff. I can see it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I might just play around and, yeah, see about like making it more rainforesty to give that more Mother Nature uh, vibe in the background. Did you do all this through Photoshop? Um, I use InDesign and then, Sorry. like, yeah, the photos, I just like placed the photos in there and then okay. just played around with everything. Okay. To, to to cut out your photos and stuff, you're always better off using Photoshop. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, like, if you're going to make, like, a pamphlet like we've made now, InDesign is your key thing to do for layouts and stuff like that. Imagine, um, pretty much imagine InDesign as an advanced version of PowerPoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because a lot them, of, like... Uh, I get them mixed up. Uh, like, like I said, like, I haven't worked with any of this stuff, man. Um, I first I first started this master's program in 2011, and I oh, took wow. I took uh, I took four classes. I took the brand management and all that, and I was like, you know what? I'm not feeling it. So I, I quick after after effective copywriting, I was like, you know what? I don't even like this. So I stopped it, and uh, I started doing auto mechanic. Uh, I went to school to be an auto mechanic. Uh, okay. Just took for myself. And now I'm re-engaging it almost 10 years later. And uh, yeah. so I haven't touched any of these tools 
So I, I forget sometimes like what InDesign does, what uh, Adobe. I don't even know if InDesign was it InDesign around back in 2011. No, no. Okay, yeah. So or it might have, but not 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 in the depth that it is right. because. I, I hate InDesign. I'll be honest with you. I hate it. <laughs> um, when I was in school, the biggest things we used were Photoshop and we <laughs> used Illustrator. Mm. You know, and the thing, like, the best way that I remember it is, is InDesign is for your words and your layouts. Um, Illustrator. Illustrator is for clean vector graphics. So when I like, I don't know if you if you know what a vector is or you're familiar with it. Yeah, if you graphic. make it really big, like, so it, Not, it's yeah. clean. Uh -huh. non-pixelated graphics pretty much oh, okay so yeah so you know in photoshop your photos are pixelated and stuff like that and when you use vectors vectors keep your shapes all together they're not pixelated they're you know they're not gonna be broken up so if you make a logo and and when you make these logos for example you're gonna want to use in uh not in design excuse me trader for that mm -hmm. because it's easier to downsize it make it smaller without losing any of you know your um composition or without it looking horrible, you know, because oh, no. it'll end up really degrading if you tr if you change it over to Photoshop. No, no. Yeah, and then, okay, because you know, like when you stretch a photo out and then it, it yeah. looks like garbage. Yeah. that's you know that's what Illust uh, Illustrator keeps from happening when you start making that stuff. Okay, so when does yeah. when does uh, After Effects really come into play? Because you know we use that so, last class, right? And that's like the animation. Animation and video. It's like so. We started talking about motion graphics um, last class, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's so that hard. Was hard for me. No, that was very hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm familiar with the program, but I've never used it. No, I didn't either. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it, basically, you know, the whole thing, especially with these motion graphics is, because um, what y'all have on me is y'all are better writers than I am. Way better. <laughs> I can't write for anything. But, you know, when it comes to these programs, the good thing about After Effects is... Um, it is basically giving these individual shapes motion. So instead of it being like a whole movie, you know, it's just short little clips to kind of, you know, just bring in life these graphic elements. That, that's, all, that's all it's for. So, you know, you want a ball to bounce around, that's what your after design's for oh, and stuff okay. like that. But when you start getting into the bigger video, that's when we go into Premiere and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So that's why he, they had us working in After Effects and moving our way up. So we won't be using that at all probably for this, I don't, I'd imagine. That depends. Um, so I don't know if y'all, did y'all watch the live session? Yeah, yeah, the moving logo. Yes, the moving logo. <laughs> oh oh like, my gosh, I'm nervous for that. Part two? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, Group session I, think two? I think it was part one at the end. I didn't see that at the end. Okay, I'd look at it again. Yeah, Yeah. so when, like I said, um, because I, I, we were supposed to have a meeting today. I didn't go to that one. I couldn't. And then we kind of went over everything already. Um, but what, what basically what's going to happen is, is like it's going to depend on what you want to do to brand your company. So for y'all, for example, y'all could do, y'all remember the radio, um, the Spotify commercial that we had to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That could be something y'all could do. You know, like, hey, Greener Day Sustainable Toys, make a little, like, it just depends on what route you want to go about right. this, you know, to make this the most effective possible. Okay. And, and if you've looked in those branding books, yeah, I mean, a lot of great examples. They all looked the same, didn't they? I thought they were all kind of the same, the pamphlet style opening up. Like, I didn't see anything moving, but I didn't look at all of them yet. I looked probably at five yeah, of them. I, I mean, within those, within those little pamphlets, because those are supposed to be printable pamphlets, pretty much. Like, ah, okay. So I have um, my old professor. He's he's a really good exec. He's super smart dude. Um, and what he would do is is like he'll put those pamphlets together, and you can either present those to clients digitally because some people you know they like digital or whatever. Yeah. Or if you wanted to go a more professional route, um, especially like for bigger jobs, he would go and print them out in a hardcover book and present them with their official stuff too. So like let's say. At the end of this, like basically, he gave them everything they needed to succeed. So when he walked away, if they had to get like another company or needed to go to a print shop, they could be like, "Hey, you're going to use these colors. Like you're going to use Pantone yellow. You're going to use Pantone green." And that's where this uh, the CYMK comes in and the RGB. So you could tell them what colors they need to use in print. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine in 2011 the program was quite different. Yeah, oh, it was. Yeah. yeah, we used Tumblr. Tumblr <laughs> to upload yeah. all the information. Yeah, and then I go back and look at my stuff, and it's become like a sex thing now. 
but <laughs> <laughs> like all my all my brand stuff is up there and I'm like, oh God. <laughs> Take this off. You're like, what am I doing here with yeah. all this brand stuff? <laughs> you better be careful, you're gonna be getting some calls right? or some messages like you, you available. <laughs> I don't what? even know what Tumblr is. Is that social media? Uh, well, Full Sail, yeah, used to use it as like a, a platform where you could upload your designs. Oh, like so, art. Yeah. So when Are I was doing familiar brand, with Behance? Huh, what's up? Are y'all familiar with Behance? No. Oh, I saw in the video. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. So if which um so if with our Adobe uh with our Adobe Suite stuff that we have right now, you also have a Behance account. Okay. Um go and look at Behance. It's actually, it's a great thing to get inspiration, ideas, like look at other people's work, like, and they, all kinds of stuff. Um, let me see real quick. I'm actually going to open my web browser real quick. Um, Behance.net. Okay. I'm quick on yeah. I looked it up after you guys were talking about it in the, the meeting. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Never heard of it. No. And like I said, you can post your own work on there. I mean, it, it, it can be used as the portfolio side as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that girl's portfolio was really good. She had oh, all her work there. Dang. It's really nice organized. Work. Like, it's a cool place you could put everything. And that's kind of why I asked that question, too, because, one, as an artist, you know, like, it's it's hard to not be so critical of your work because I know, like, after we'll get done with some of these projects, I'm like, man, this is hot garbage. <laughs> like, well, well, you know, like, um, especially, like, I had a really hard time with the video stuff last month Me too. Like, it was rough and then i would put it together and then it would be pixelated or I, like the sound wasn't coming out right and i was just like i don't like this i'm you know and that's why like i was asking him like what kind of stuff you know do you want to put on a portfolio for this kind of industry you know because like the work that y'all seen that's more like street art printmaking stuff like that so it wouldn't necessarily apply to like you know the design stuff that we were doing here mm-hmm so, I mean, Behance, definitely a great thing to post your work on. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have an iPad? I do. Yeah. yeah I um, Do you use Procreate? I don't. They actually, so you have Adobe. They've got one called, it's Fresco. Oh, really? I've never heard of that. It's a good program. It's it's just like that. You can use your pen on it. Um, and it's, yeah, I've got Procreate. I just, I'm not used to Procreate yet. It's hard to get used to one and then go to the other. Yeah, yeah, that's because I'm really used to Procreate. So doing uh, anything else is like, oh my gosh, you're adjusting to all these Adobe stuff. And I'm like having a hard time. But yeah, that's how I do a lot of my drawings. Did you do all your business stuff on there? Yeah, I do all everything through Procreate. So oh. um, like all the designs I make, um, you should try it sometime, Michael. Um, like if you want to draw anything. So digitally. yeah, I, I drew uh, all the ones, uh, all my image, you know, was it my shapes? I actually, yeah. I actually drew those out on Freeform first. And that was like difficult um, oh, okay. as hell on Freeform. So yeah, I'll try this. Is that what it is on Procreate? You can just it says sketch, paint, and create. Um, yeah, I have like a, a Apple pencil. That's what I um, have, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can actually draw on your iPad. Okay. I feel like Freeform didn't give me enough tools to really, like, create. So, like, that, yeah. I have two images of two people with, like, the river going through it. Like, that took forever to do, but uh, on there. So, yeah, I'll try Procreate. But what is this... Uh, What's this other one? Fresco. Yeah, what's that one, uh, Josh? So it's pretty much like Procreate, um, and you can use your Apple Pen and stuff like that. It comes with your Adobe Suite. You download it on your oh, iPad. Wow. And um, what, like basically, it's it's like it's the same thing, but it's got more tools. You can actually use vector pens. Oh wow. Yeah, you can use uh, vector pens. You can use um, pencils, pixelated pens, stuff like that. And it's, I mean, if you're getting used to Adobe, it's really good. And then you can also control, like, line weight, stuff like that. I, pretty much, like I said, just like Procreate. The only difference is with Procreate, you pay that one payment and it's yours, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. The thing about uh, Procreate, I don't think you could do a vector file. Um, you could do, like, PNGs and all that. But I didn't see vector. Did you? Hmm. Um, I, well, like I said, I hadn't really messed with the oh, okay. Procreate a whole lot. So, um, I'm not sure, but I think they're getting to it. Oh, I, I would think so. Cause they had a big update. I know last year on Procreate, I, like right when I bought it, it was like, everybody was so excited. So, mm -hmm. 
And like it says, oh, the other, oh, that's the other thing that's really good about Fresco. Whatever you do in Fresco, you can transfer directly to Photoshop. See, oh, that's what I need. Yeah, because yeah, everything I'm like, all transferring everything. So that's cool. I'm going to check yeah, that um, out. Let me see. There's a guy. If I'm going to see. He's actually, uh, he uses Procreate all the, or not Procreate, Fresco all the time. And let me see. Um, he's on Behance. And I used to watch his live videos all the time, but I haven't in so long. And he, he, you know, he creates a bunch of weird stuff, but he's he's a really good artist. Um, so how do I get the Adobe Suite on my iPad for free? Like yeah, I I'm just. Uh, I think you could just download it, it in the. Does it app automatically store? know? Is it already know? I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. So what you could do is you'll download it. Um, you'll download the suite, and then it'll tell you all the programs that are you're eligible to download. Oh, okay. And let oh well let me give you all since y'all um, since we're kind of talking about all this let me give you all a couple of programs that I think are really really great um, especially with Adobe that maybe y'all will like um, so there's Adobe Capture that can be used on your cell phone and I'll I'll write it in the chat to you real quick oh okay um, there's so much I don't even know about it <laughs> yeah no like there's a lot of cell phone apps that a lot of people don't know about so with Adobe Capture. The really okay. great thing about it is, is you can draw something out on a piece of paper. You can take a picture of it and you can trans in. Um, sorry, give me one second. My Alexa's going off. <laughs> Telling my son to go to the restroom. Um, so um, what you like, so you could draw a picture of anything you want and then you'll upload it. Um, it'll save it into your Adobe library. You could take it as a shape, take it as a texture, it's got multiple options. It's not just for drawing. So if you, there's a color you see out, like let's say you're out in public and you're like, man, I really like that color. You can oh, open wow. up the capture, take the picture of that, and then you can save it for a color palette. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Yeah. Same thing with textures, actually. Talk about mm -hmm. textures. You could do the same thing because um, before I transferred over to the master's program, I was doing the, um, I was doing the game design program. Mm. But oh, I was like, man, I really don't want to do another bachelor's. Like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. But um, we were using, I forgot what the program is, but it was uh, for painting um, for painting textures and stuff on your 3D images. Um, but, like, let's say I like this, you know, my TV screen over here, and I like that, you know, vinyl, you know, glossy look. You take a picture of it. I mean, and it's, it's a really neat program. It'll get you what you need. Um, I think there's even one for text. So, like, if you're out in public and you see a text that, like, you're like, what you know what type awesome. is that you'll take it it'll identify the type mm -hmm. oh my yeah, gosh so it, you yeah, know, no. i noticed on our iphones i don't know if you guys updated your iphones but you can you can press the text in your picture and copy it and paste it I'm, I'm a galaxy <laughs> person so yeah. i'm not i'm not an <laughs> iphone <laughs> oh really <laughs> no honestly um my wife bought me a ipad last year and it was my first thing that I'd had, like Apple, in a long time. And then, of mm -hmm. course, with the game design program, they sent me an MSI computer. And then when I went for my master's, they sent me a MacBook. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and I was like, oh, man. I was like, oh, like, all right. So um, Adobe Capture is really good. Um, give me one second. Uh, let's ma let me make sure. If I make sure I'm, these are important. Like, I think they, like, um, John didn't know about Adobe uh, Capture. And you know, yeah, um, I have uh, never heard of it. No, it, like it's one they leave out, and it's very important because uh, it honestly, a lot of this stuff right here that I did, like I drew it up, I captured it on there, and then I went to Adobe Illustrator and redrew it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, it makes it easier for your vector lines and stuff like that. Um, let me see Adobe. So when I sign in, can I sign in with my student account? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, let me see. yeah, because with our student account, we get like all of it for free. free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because so they have like uh, the Adobe Express stuff, which y'all know what Express is, but they have it for your phones. So if you need to make something quick, fast, and in a hurry, Adobe Express is good for your phones. Oh yes, I like Adobe Express. Yeah, that one's a cool. Oh, and what what is it? Uh, Adobe Rush. Adobe. I haven't used yeah for the video so. video editing. Yeah, because I like to do like uh, short videos, so that's really good for just like easy editing compared to um, Premiere Pro. Oh wow! Yeah, and then let me see. I, 
Honestly, I probably, I think Capture really covers it. Elements is really good for photography. If you're going to do brush ups and stuff like that, instead of using your phone app, you can do Elements or Lightroom. They do have a Lightroom one too. Yeah, I've never used Lightroom. I always wanted to get into it. I never played around with it though. Is it mm. easy to use? Honestly, I'd have to ask my wife because she worked with Lightroom more than I did. Oh, okay. I know it's really good about using like you can do your tones and you know you could change the colors stuff like that a lot. Yeah. And Lightroom's really good about doing groupings of photos. So like mm -hmm. if you have a massive photo shoot, just dump it all in there. It keeps it organized. Yeah, but, and keeps them all like the same because it changes like the tones and stuff in the picture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. I think some people sell um, like Lightroom templates, like, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. And that, those are textures, uh, te some of those are textures in themselves as well that are built. Mm -hmm. So, oh. but yeah, I definitely, I definitely, the fresco is really good. And there's a lot of good tutorials. It's still a new program too. So you're not behind on the curve if you start learning to use it. Okay, okay. I'm going to use it. Yeah. yeah. I'm self-reliant um, on Procurate. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy named, hang on, I'm going to type his name in, and he, has, he's, he, he draws crazy stuff. Um, his name's Fresh Cake. Fresh Cake. Yeah, and you look him up on Behance. Okay. All right. He, like, most of the work that he's done, it's on Fresco. Oh, wow. Okay, let's see. Fresh um, Cake. He's worked for Nickelodeon, um, stuff like that, and, I mean, these like I, I've watched him in his live videos and some of the stuff is stuff that he has just made. Oh wow! Is he an illustrator or? Oh yeah. Yes, yes. Um, because he's worked for Nickelodeon, um, Cartoon Network, and a couple others. And I mean, we just like I said, I like to watch. He's got a Ren and Stimpy kind of look and vibe to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got one yeah, more really thing. Cool. Yep. Um, just to make sure that. We don't get deemed for anything. Is there another concept? I know we discussed it the very first time, but just uh, since we've already covered what, two weeks after that our last one meeting, mm -hmm. is there anything on the first question, is there any other concept so far um, that has impacted more of our understanding of our projects? Hmm. Honestly, I, for, for me, I think it's a lot of what we talked about earlier is like, you know, the voice, the tone, um, just, you know, kind of understanding that you are who you're projecting to be hmm. kind of thing. And like, if you, if you don't follow that, it really is going to impact, you know, your clientele, your look of your company and stuff like that. Um, I forgot who it was. Um, it was a couple of classes back when they talked about the branding process. Um, and then uh, Pepperidge Farms, actually, there, there it oh, is. Oh, yeah. It was, mm -hmm. the, it was the Pepperidge Farms um, stuff, you know, and they had changed everything so much that it kind of just, you know, threw the brand off kind of bit and they lost a lot of business. Um, and when it comes to that, I mean, you know, I, there was another professor too, um, a couple, I forgot what their name was um, during the program, but they said that, you know, branding is supposed to bring people together, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, you want to make part, people feel far to, you start making your, um, uh, I don't, I don't want to say a cult. That's not the right word for it. <laughs> um, like a, a community. Yeah. You start yeah, making yeah, your yeah. communities, I guess, you know, you start making your branding communities and stuff like that. And I, I think I had even talked about it on our papers, you know, you, you are what you brand, like you pretty much, you are what you brand, you know? And I mean, prime example, 2020 elections, you know, look at, you know, the election, you know, you, if you were following Biden, you were looked at one way and a Trump flag, you're looking another way. And I mean, it's, it's a form of branding essentially, you right. know, um, even like, you know, even our states do it themselves, you know, you fly a Texas flag or, you know, you California flag or wherever you're from, you know, that, you know, so essentially your branding is everything. And when they like, when people see a Texas flag, they automatically think gun, gun holding cowboys. Yeah, you know? they associate it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you look at a you know Florida or somewhere else, you know, and it's just all based. And the sad part is, a lot of it's based off demographics and not psychographics. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah, you know, and that's the other thing. You know, I think um, you know one of the most important things is to find that need, like we were saying earlier, is because the need goes a lot deeper than the demographics of the project. You know, it's uh 
you're not wanting to feed to, you know, a Christian, you know, a Christian female based group. You know, you want to know what what do these women need that are in this group? It's a lot more than just being, you know, Christian women or whether it be, you know, you know, black black males in a certain area or like you've got to find, you know, what what essentially the, the need is. Right, right. Yeah. Like what's going to benefit them, yeah. too? Like you can't just put something out there and expect everyone to, you know, oh, OK, but there has to be something that, you know, benefits yeah. what yeah what they need you know what about yeah, you, you start... oh i'm sorry oh, yeah. oh no no you go, go oh. ahead you're good oh what was that the the first question was there anything recently uh any of the key concepts that that maybe have changed the way you thought or impacted your understanding of the projects mm, i think similar to josh um like the voice and tone like mm. That goes along with the designs you're making, like being able to communicate that, you know, like in your onlyness statement and having your words communicate through design. Okay. You know what I mean? Just like having it go together, because before I probably didn't know that, like, like about tone and voice and like how important that is. Right. That goes with design, you know, but I think that's something that I learned um, from this class specifically. And how about you, uh, Michael? Ooh. I'm torn between look and feel um, from week three and kind of week four's, uh, what was week four called? I was just looking at it. Uh, design principles. I find design principles to be uh, a little interesting because I've always felt like even though a lot of people want to kind of define art and design at the end of the day it's still like ever growing and it's kind of like it's it's more organic than we like to think sometimes you know so even with the design principles that he laid out uh during the lecture at the end of it he was like hey there's like multiple people that have different ideas of what design principles are right but at the end of the day Here's the foundation of it, right? So I found that interesting. Um, as far as the look and feel goes, I think it just helped me because um, I guess it was a reminder to make sure that everything stays consistent throughout that entire, mm -hmm. you know, whatever we're going to create. It just that look and feel needs to stay the same because I can, I know me, like I'll, I'll sometimes get off on a tangent and then I have to go back and look at it. I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't match this. And what am I trying to say here? So those are the, mm -hmm. the, the new concepts that uh, at least the past two weeks has changed my way of how this project is supposed to go. Yeah. Right. Consistency is really important. Yeah. It, it is hard, too, to keep everything consistent, you know, yeah. like the, the colors and the elements to keep it all so cohesive. That's true. Especially like in this like storming stage, this brainstorming stage where you're like, all right, these are my colors, these are my shapes, these are my patterns and textures. And then you start going, you're like, you know what, but I kind of like that pattern over there now, or I like that texture over there now. So now you're either gonna have to, you know, implement it in that other design or start over. Yes, I don't know. That's what makes it hard too is, and I gotta kind of wrap this up, I gotta go in a second. Cool. But I think the, the hardest part about it is, is the like you you know you're like i like this i like this i like this but right now especially with what we're doing in classes why do you like yeah, it yeah, what yeah. makes it important and having to explain your reasoning yeah the reasoning I, think is, I mean anybody can make something that looks good but making sure that all those elements can visually communicate what they need to say is the hardest part yeah you know when that's yeah. where that only the statement really comes into play like uh, once you get that nailed down i felt like at least I have a direction so I can always go back to it and be like, oh, my only list statement, you know, like I always mm -hmm. go back to it. Um, do you, um, I, guys, I have our, one more our, thing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, our meeting's about to end okay. in 10 minutes. I have Just one more thing, you know. though. Do you guys have any other recommendations for a theme for me? A uh, theme. You had a very, I mean, very earthy theme, I think, already as it was. Yeah, well, it started um, out with biodiversity because it, it was like all inclusive, right? I can include with biodiversity. I know he said it was stuffy, but like the the term itself was like all inclusive of all organics, and so I was going to include people and society. So that didn't work. So 
rainforest. I see you trying to narrow it down to something else, mm -hmm. but is there any other ideas you guys have? Maybe just organic, just in general, like mm -hmm. maybe a nature. I mean, maybe just, I mean, y'all are doing sustainable toys in nature, recycling, earthy. It's, it's, it's going to be there, you know, right. or I mean, just, um, kind of like Kiana, I think a, I, you had a kind of like a mix of two themes. I think you could have went with like children's playroom kind of uh -huh. theme because you did uh, Mother Nature. Yeah, you did art education though, didn't you? Oh, you yes. Parent? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like you had a very art education like background that was kind of going yeah. into that. And Michael, you could, like I said, you could do the other stuff as well. Mm. Like I said, you could probably do like a nature theme. Like, I mean, because there's, there's so much to nature. Yeah, it doesn't have true. to be just rainforest. I mean, you know, so right. th th there leaves a lot of elements there for you to work with. Okay. Wonderful. But, all right, guys. Well, I have to go to the soccer stuff, so I'm going to head out. I'm <laughs> sorry that I didn't get to talk to everybody. That's all right. Miss Clark, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, oh. Yeah. oh, hey. She just joined. Sure. Yeah, no. Okay. Hey, y'all. I'm sorry. I had no, you're all right. I understand. Today, so I, yeah. Oh, my okay. bad. Y'all have a good day. If y'all need right. anything, hit me up, please. Don't hesitate. All right. See you. <laughs> Bye, all guys. right. Bye, Josh. Yeah, um, sharing our, our meeting, it, it ends in less than 10 minutes. But um, if you wanted to talk about anything or uh, any questions you had, um, didn't really have any questions. I kind of do this every day in regular life. Right. Um, so I, um, chose the, well, I guess I could just give a quick little rundown. I chose the, um, hockey theme, um, mm -hmm. and chose my theme of being the caring, understanding hero. So, um, with that being said, um, I'm focused on how the, um, uh, how the brand itself is connected to the community. And because people don't want to know what you know until they know how much we care. It doesn't matter what entertainment is coming to any city. They need to know what benefit it is for them. So, um, just breaking that down to, um, them not only being, um, a great team that can, you know, get the job done, have a competitive score, competitive edge, and be talented, but also the fact that they are focused on um, building the community and being a positive um, role model for children, X, Y, Z, you know, all those things. So my theme was also hockey with heart. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I did like your theme. I thought um, the idea of it was really good, like community. Um, especially in Las Vegas, you want to have like more things uh, that has to do with family rather than, um, you know, because people think of something else when they think of Las Vegas. So I really like the, the aspect of um, like together right. and caring and community for the hockey team and being role models for, for kids, too. I think that's pretty cool. Exactly. Right. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm sorry I was late to these and trying to work around my work schedule and get to these meetings, y'all. Um, oh, I'm glad you came in. Yeah, <laughs> even though it's the last yeah, like five it's, minutes. <laughs> it's nice seeing y'all yeah, <laughs> for a brief uh, five minutes, right. <laughs> Did you have anything else, Michael, uh, um, no. before the time runs out? Um, I know the professor, Sharon, was talking about your imagery. How do you think you were going to, are you going to change anything about it, making uh, making the images look more uh, community oriented? Yes. So when I looked at them before, um, so like recently, like you said, your theme, um, he talked about the toys, or you talked about the toys and changing your theme. Right. Um, your theme, I think it develops over time. As you begin to hash out you know, what you want things to actually look like and right. what you want them to feel like. Um, it's okay for it to change. So yes, um, originally it was just kind of uh, trying to be a competitive team, but then um, I'm working with another client and they were like, well, the reality is, you know, in everyday life, right? Uh, the reality is I don't want people to just come buy my stuff, but I want them to know that I care about the products that I present, care about what I'm you know, serving. So 
also looking at that, I was like, well, okay, we can do that in class too, you know? Um, so yes, I will be putting more pictures of, um, you know, family oriented because hockey is very family oriented. You, you learn is passed down most right. of the time, like football and baseball and basketball. So, um, yes, more family images, more of, um, because I did also did a lot of research on the residential area of Las Vegas and the 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 people who are there. Um, so it's a lot of families, a lot of um, married f- people actually, which shocked me because it's Vegas. But um, there are a lot of married people. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's uh, yes, I will be including the long short answer. Yeah, that. your imagery actually looks like it's trying to show growth. Almost because yes. you show like the hockey puck, then the individual players, and then it right. goes to, you know, outreach to the children, and then now we're in the community doing Habitat uh-huh. for Humanity type of thing. I don't know if that was captured through him, but I that's that's what I see in your imagery. Exactly. Very yeah. good. Good eye. Uh-huh. That is what I was going for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's very different than Josh's. I like both of yours, but in different ways. I like both aspects that you guys took, the directions. Right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 